G'day guys. All right, uh, video number six. Uh, this one we are going to do the, um, we're going to start drawing the columns and if there's time, we'll do the finials as well, which go on top. Uh, again, this is going to be pretty easy because we just draw one of them and we can duplicate it for the rest. So we draw one here, we can duplicate it for the other side. We draw one finial and then we can copy it three times to go on top. Okay, so we'll start off with the, oh, where are we? Start off with the column, drawing number 10. Uh, and to get started with this, um, what we want to do, it can be a little bit complicated. So I'll try and go pretty slow so you can sort of follow along. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I've had the most success doing it this way. We get the rectangle tool and we need, we, our, our um, column that we're going to turn has a diameter of 38 millimeters. That's 400 millimeters long. So we'll start off with a rectangle. That's 38, 38. Enter. Right. And then what we want to do is we want to use the pencil tool to draw a line from corner to corner on both sides. And that gives us the exact midpoint. Okay. Then we're going to draw a line straight up on the blue axis, 400 millimeters long. Right, so we've got a line all the way up to the top there. Then what we need to do is we need to grab, because we're going to be turning this into a circle, you'll start off with a square piece of timber and we're going to turn it into a circle. We've got to put the circle in and that just goes out to the edge, which will have a radius of 19 mil. Then we're going to use the eraser to erase everything that's not the circle. Like that. Get rid of these lines here as well. Okay, so we've got a circle and we've got um, the lines straight up the top. Now, I'll just quickly show you the principle behind what we're going to be doing here. It's something that we've kind of already done before on the <coughs> top and base and on the front of the drawer with the routed edge. Same principle, but just in a different uh, context, I guess you could say. What we're going to do is we're going to use the pencil tool to draw a line from here, straight out on the green axis to the edge, straight up on the blue axis, 400 millimeters, and then back to the top there. And what that does is it's given us a little... Um, like a, a sort of filled in rectangle what we're going to do is with the with this rectangle we're going to draw on the pattern we'd like to turn okay but we're gonna imagine that we're sort of cutting this down the middle here we just need to draw one half of it so we're going to be drawing it on sort of this half once we've drawn it on we have the follow me tool we're going to click on this and we can actually follow it around the shape like that and see how that gives us a cylinder right exact same principle but on this white rectangle, we want to draw in the profiles that we want or the, the you know, the sort of things we're going to be turning. Okay. So again, we kind of want this to be as symmetrical as possible. So let's start off with the, um, I guess, these flat spots. Okay. We're going to have a flat spot on either end. Now, I'm not going to draw it exactly like it is on here. I'm going to draw it the same way I've sort of been turning them in the workshop. And then you could probably even use this as a drawing that you take into the workshop to do your um to do your turning but yeah for now um i'm just going to sort of draw it by eye and do what i think looks good because again it says student to customize your turning profile so maybe you could follow along with me and once you've got the hang of it then you can have a crack at drawing your own one that you'd like to turn okay so we're going to go straight up on here and i reckon we probably got to go i don't know that looks like maybe we'll leave 50 mil of a flat spot on either end so we'll leave 50 mil and remember, whatever we do on the bottom, we have to do on the top. It might be a little bit tricky this time to um, copy it across. Uh, no, maybe, maybe we'll give it a go. So let's see. From here, we'll go with the pencil tool. And let's imagine we're just going to go in with the parting tool. And we want to go in five millimeters. Okay. So we're going to get in five millimeters with the parting tool. And we're going to go on the blue axis. If I can bloody get on it. There we go. Press the up arrow. Five millimeters okay so um, it's sort of hard to imagine until you've actually started practicing wood turning but we would go in with a tool that is five millimeters wide go in five millimeters deep to remove this part then we're gonna put in this sort of little half round bit and i want that to be maybe let's see why can't i get on the blue axis there we go um let's see i want that to be 10 millimeters wide, let's say. So we'll type in 10. Okay, so I've got a 10 millimeter gap, and then I'm going to put in with the pencil another five millimeter flat spot um, past that. Okay, I hit escape now. So from here to here, I can now put in a two point arc. 
from there to there. And I reckon just a half circle will do. Yep, five millimeters. <coughs> That's a half circle. Oh, hang on. Five millimeters. Okay. So you got to imagine I've gone in here with the parting tool. That's five millimeters wide, five millimeters deep. And I've done it over here. And then I've gone in with maybe like a fingernail scraper or something to make that little half round. Okay. So now I've got a little flat spot and I want to do a little bulge next. So that one was kind of a cove that went in. Now we're going to do a bulge. Now this bulge is going to be a little bit bigger. So let's say it's maybe, I don't know, 30 millimeters. Yeah, 30 millimeters looks good. If I go 30 millimeters, I make a five millimeter flat spot after that. You're going to want to do sort of five millimeter flat spots in between all of your, I guess, profiles, all the different kind of bits you want to do. Um, because that's that's generally how you do it when you're turning. You turn down to your um, flat spot with the parting tool, and then in between your parting tool cuts, you can start shaping your balls and your <clears throat> your coves and all sorts of and your beads and all sorts of different things. Um, let's see. So we got the two point arc again, and go from there to there. And we're just going to take this out to the edge, right? So we're going to bulge it there, right? So that looks pretty good. Okay. Now we've got another sort of cove in there. So again, we'll go, we'll leave a 10 millimeter gap and then a five millimeter flat spot. Oh, that wasn't right. When I type five, there we go, might take 50 or something. Okay. So with the pencil tool, draw the flat spot in and then with the two point arc, go in with the cove tool and it's going to be a half circle like that. Okay, now let's see. What we want to do is we want to go straight back to the edge here, five millimeters. And so you can imagine we're going to be getting rid of this, uh, these two, we're going to be turning away these sort of bits. Uh, now we want to put in a just a long two point arc from there to there. So we're going to copy this, all this, um, all this geometry we've put in up to the top. So I think we should, I just don't think there'll be an issue copying it. You can really just highlight like that, hold down shift to deselect the faces and then grab the move tool, press control, grab it. Yeah, look at that, it worked. And we'll move it straight up to there. Okay, now from, I've got the two point arc tool from here to here, we wanna put in a little bulge like that. And we'll probably bulge this one in. We don't want to go too skinny or it'll probably snap when you're turning it, <clears throat> especially if you're turning it out of pine. So let's make it maybe just a six mil bulge. And that looks okay. But what we need to do now is we're going to erase that, 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 and that line and see how we've kind of got the profile that we want to turn, I guess you could say. I reckon we can now grab the follow me tool Click on this and swing it around. Oh, hang on, wrong way. Click. And there we go. All right, so there is our turned column. All right, looks pretty good. Um, I think that's a pretty nice shape. And it looks it all looks pretty solid. If you if at the end you've you've sort of swept it around and it looks really skinny, you might want to go back and redesign it a little bit. Because <clears throat> if you go too skinny when you actually chuck it on the lathe to turn it, it'll snap. I know the first design I did with some of my students in class, I tried to get them to turn it a little bit too skinny and a lot of them ended up snapping. So just make sure you get that kind of chunky look. So we'll grab the paint bucket and paint it. Uh, oh, hang on. Might need to highlight the whole thing. Right click, make it a component and we'll call this columns. Okay, perfect. That looks good. Now we need to place this in somewhere. So we're going to have to place it in here. Hopefully we've got a, have we got a 38 millimeter gap? 40 millimeter gap, perfect. So let's see. Um, what we need to do is we need to go 38 uh, this way. Oops, that wasn't right. With the measuring tool from this sort of the top corner here, we're going to go 38, 38, and 38 this way. That, and that's sort of the position where it has to sit. And to actually place it in, we'll probably actually need a like a sort of halfway point. So I'll go to 19, that gives us a halfway point. That way when I grab this, 
I'll grab it right on the middle edge here. And then if I line it up with that halfway point, it's in the right position. See that? That's where we want it. Okay, so I'll do the same thing over here. I guess I don't need to do all that tape measuring I just did. I just need to measure <coughs> halfway, which is 19 millimeters that way. Grab the move tool, hit control to make a copy. There we go, and move it over here. Okay, so that is now in. All right, now this, um, I don't know, how long has this video been going for? Should, we do, uh, should I do the columns in this one, the finials in this too? Um, nah, well, I'll do that in another video. Um, and I'll do the finials in the, um, the crown profiles as well. Okay, so if you follow along with that, great. Um, I would say try, you know, do it, copy exactly what I did for my profile and then see how it works and then try and customize it. Do your own wood turning, like, because you, you're going to be turning on the lathe. It'd be cool if you could, you know, turn your own profile, something that you've come up with. So play around with it, see how you go. Hopefully it looks good and um, save your work. And I'll see you in the next video.